Alright, so... Uh, let's bring... Some food. In case my dog gets hungry on the way. Now you might wonder what those bubbles are that look like I'm have a buff or something. Well, you'd be right. Um, if I mm. there we go. Fire resistance and water breathing permanent for seconds, as long as I'm on my dog. If I leave my dog, then I lose the buff, but it lasts for that four seconds afterwards, so it's good. Okay. Now, which way do I want to go? I guess it really doesn't matter. Although it would help to go the right way. <laughs> so I guess it doesn't matter. Whatever. Okay. So now, let's go to land here. Now, let's see. Assuming that's north, then I think I want to go this way. Now, I'm going to take this opportunity and talk a bit about what I, how come I, the reason I do not expect to find strongholds. Okay. As you remember, I generated this map back on 1.713. Strongholds did not exist back then. And I really should bring my map with me now that I think about it. Because otherwise I get turned around too easily. Um, Strongholds didn't exist back in 1.743. And... Okay, great, now it's raining. Um, I really don't feel like shouting over the rain. So, there we go. Um... Right, strongholds. And now, I generated a large amount of this map on 1.7.3. The reason I did this, as you remember, is be uh, Now, if you recall, I did this back before I upgraded to 1.8.3. The reason is... What is that? Hmm. Don't remember this. Okay. Base. This is the problem with a really secret underground base. Yeah, there we go. <coughs> ah, yeah, here we go. Okay. Right. Um. Totally lost my thought. <sighs> Strongholds. One point seven four three. Right. Um. Yeah. So. I was looking at a map generated for me by a map program called AMIDST, or I'm this, am, am I this, I don't know what it's called. Um, and the problem that I noticed is that it lists the three strongholds in a given world, one of which I've obviously already found, two of which I don't think are going to be on my map. Because, quite simply, they're in places that I generated in 1.7.3 that simply aren't going to have. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Aren't going to have. Come back here. Strongholds. So, we will see what we discover when we go out there, if my dog decides he wants to cooperate. There. So we'll see what we find when we go out there, but I really don't think I'm going to find a stronghold, because one of the stronghold, supposed stronghold locations is firmly in a 1.7.3 area. The other is 
right on the edge of a 1.7.3 area. Okay. So, I want to head down this way. Because if there's going to be a stronghold, it's going to be down at the corner of this map. According to the various map designers. Because I've got a map made in Cartograph and a map made in AMDISP that basically gives conflicting information. The Cartograph map is the actual map of what my world looks like. The AMDISP map tells me what my map should look like. And is correct after out, after once you get out a certain distance from my spawn, but uh, and that's what I think the conflict is. Because according to my map, there should be a stronghold over in this area, but it's firmly within a 1.7.3 area to the point where I don't think there's going to be. But I'm going to look anyway, and I'll put the map up afterwards so you can take a look at it yourself. Okay, so according to my map, there can be a stronghold anywhere around in here. But as you can see from the fact that there's no lag, this is all I think needs to be fed. Yeah. This is all totally pre generated terrain. Okay. So where was I? Mm, right. So I guess there's nothing for it but to dig down this general area. See what I find. Copper. Not that I really need it. More cool. And bedrock. Alright. So let's just work my way back up here. I'm not going to look very hard simply because you know I can look at the map and clearly see this is a 1.7.3 area. It's pre-generated. The fact that I didn't lag at all getting here is pretty much proof in my opinion. I'm not going to find a stronghold. Caves? Yeah, probably. But a stronghold? Nah, no strongholds over here. Which is a little disappointing, but not unexpected. Oh, cool. And I'm underwater. Which means I have a pretty good idea of where I am. Yeah. Right there. Or not? Oh, that's cool. And I'm out of coal, or not coal, torches. Hm. Funny. Okay. I mean, I guess it makes sense that I'm so low down. Okay, I will get out of here. I'm gonna grab a bit of coal here, though. With this coal and the wood that's everywhere, I can make some torches while I'm out. Certainly a 
lot of coal around in this cave. This would be a good cave to start out in. Not that I'm anywhere near starting out, but oh well. I mean, look at all this coal. It's a huge amount of coal here. And more uranium. I really gotta do something with a nuclear reactor at some point. Okay. That looks like everything, and that's like 48 coal. I have a stack of coal practically. Okay. Now, let's get out of here. Where's the exit? Yeah, it's not there. Ah, it's down there. Okay. That. And then I come down here. Now I have a stack of coal. I'm going to stop there. Switch to the jetpack and goodbye. Okay. Awesome. Chop that tree down. Probably seal the hole just so that I don't fall into it again. Okay. And let's make some torches. Okay. Now then, let's see. Map, right. Okay, so this is about the center of where I would expect to see a stronghold. And if I climb up this mountain here. can clearly see this is all clearly 1.723 terrain searching out for miles and miles so okay yeah on to the next spot and the next spots off in that direction Now this spot is interesting because it is right on the edge of the 1.7.3 generated terrain. So it might actually have a stronghold. Because it's out in the area where I went to generate red power. So there's a line between the 1.7.3 generated terrain and the... 1.1 uh, generated terrain and there's a chance the stronghold might be just enough into the 1.1 terrain that it will spawn so hopefully that will happen ow <laughs> yeah, another big deposit of coal now I'm not lagging and lag is generally my indication of new terrain. So. Of course, now I'm underneath my thumb, so I can't tell if this is on the map or not. Oh well. Forgot about that. What was that? Okay. This still looks like 1.7.3 to me. Ah, that's red power too. So as like I said, I think I'm right on the scene because you can kind of see where it goes up, goes up, and then just abruptly shifts. Yeah. Hmm. So 
for now. The question is, is the stronghold around here? According to the map, it would be in a slight snowy area. And there's a slight snowy area right there. Yeah, see? It comes up here and just abruptly shifts. This is... Okay. This is the split line between 1.7.3 and RC2. And if I come up here, it'll start generating fresh terrain. Not sure where the fresh terrain is, but around here is fresh terrain. So... Now the question is... <laughs> that ice is spreading. Where's the best spot to look? Right here, I think, actually. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> Yoo -hoo. Oh, there we go. I have to remember that. Okay. Uh, uh, eh, eh. Sit. There we go. Now, oh, what's this? Uh, oh, okay. Yep, see, marble. That's a very good sign. Yeah, this is just a little cave. Okay. Still. A good sign is a good sign. And it proves I'm in new terrain, which proves that there's a good, good chance that this might actually work. Alright. Let's dig on down here. Ah, I hear lava. Oh, there's the lava. Whoa. If I had dug much deeper, I'd have... Oh, okay, I guess I was landed in on the platform. Um, lava's all well and good, but it's not a stronghold. Hmm. Hmm. This is where I wish I had some water on me. All right, let's go back up. Try a slightly different spot. Let's try. Hmm. Let's try over here. <laughs> wow. Three snowballs. Hooray. <laughs> um, okay, um, sure. Feel like such a waste to get rid of all these snowballs. There we go. Okay, now where was I? Let's try. Ooh, eat more snowballs. Try. Yeah, let's see, I lost my direction. I think it's this way. According to my map, the stronghold is actually over here. So let's try that. According to my map, the stronghold should be right about here. Uh, 
says 760 by 580. So let's try 760 by 580. Which is still definitely within the red power 2 area, so this should work. on if I'm digging down. Where's... Is that? Oh, it's sapphire. And actually, no, it's emerald, excuse me. And I can't pick it up. Mm, kind of drops if I can. Yeah. I'm not finding anything. I get the distinct impression that there's nothing to find. Silver. So I'm definitely in the right area, but it's simply not spawning me anything. And bedrock. Okay. So... Yeah. So I've come all the way down to bedrock, and this is where it says it should be. So, yeah. It does not look like there's going to be any strongholds. Which is annoying. Alright. Grab some dirt here, and just deal with that. Like that. Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to head back to my base, and while I do, huh, I hope I can, well, I know, I've got the compass, hooray, compass says that way, alright, I'm going to head back to my base, and while I do that, I'm going to show my two maps, and further explain my actions that I'm going to be taking next. Right. Okay, so on the left is a cartograph map of my world as it was before I went exploring, and on the right is the AMIDST map that I was talking about of what my map should look like. And because I've had to have it kind of zoomed out in order to fit it on the screen like this, then I circled the important parts. The green circles in the middle of both maps is where my main base is. And on the cartograph map to the top left corner, you can just barely make out the underwater or under ice base that I built. The black circle represents the stronghold that I found. The red strong the red the red circles correspond to the places where there should be strongholds according to the AMIDST map. And finally on the left the yellow circles are highlighting the map joints. And what I mean by map joints is joints where the terrain was generated by different versions of Minecraft. If you look at the terrain where the green circle is and how it goes up to a line in the top yellow oval and then goes off to the terrain where the black circle is and on the left it goes over it to a line where the vertical yellow oval is and then goes into the red power 2 terrain which I'll show in more detail in a minute whereas on the right it just goes out and out and out quite a ways it's not shown on this picture because that's where I went out to the place where my nether base portal comes out, that is the 1.7.3 area that I, I've mentioned some time to time. The area directly north of my base is where the stronghold is, is the area generated in 
think it was 1.8. I can't quite remember now. But as you can see, the black circle, the stronghold, is well up from where the 1.7.3 area is. But if you look at the two red circles, the one on the right is firmly in the 1.7.3 area, and the one on the left is right on the edge of where the terrain should be. So you can see that there's a bit of a mix-up here, and you can clearly see that as I have went and explored both these lo two locations, there are no strongholds there, and there will never be strongholds there because that terrain has been generated on 1.7.3. To further emphasize this, I show this picture where you can, this is a picture that I did, this is a cartograph map of this part of my world after I did the exploring in this part. As you can see, right down, a little off-center of the screen, but there's the line between the 1.7.3 and the 1.1 terrain that's very clear because it goes from the two different versions. This area on the left is all red power too, and the black with the red dots, that's the volcanoes. The white snowy area at the bottom is where I explored looking for the stronghold, and you can clearly see that even though I generated part of it, that whole entire area is just, just right on the edge. It's just not far enough out to be generating a stronghold. Two asides while we're looking at this, in the top right corner, you can probably see, I don't know how well this will look when it gets on YouTube, but you can probably see my little underwater base, that little square under the ice. And on the far left, you can see how I followed the land out and just kept going out and out and out, and I finally got to trees, and those are the Red Power 2 trees in the forest, which is fun. And then it's on the way back from that that I got the flax seeds and whatnot, like I said back in that episode. Okay, so that's those are my maps, and that's my justification for what I'm going to do next, which is spawn myself a pair of end portals. Now, my justification is actually quite simple. If I had been able to find the strongholds, then they would have had end portals. But the strongholds be did not spawn on my map because of how I generated my map. Therefore, I'm going to overlook that and get end portals anyway. Now then, I'm going to put one in the chest like that. Actually, it's a super item, if you will, so I'm going to put it here. Good. And I'm going to stop holding it in my hand, because if I right-click this, I don't want to just plop it somewhere. Now, I'm going to grab my dragon egg next. So to do that, I need to break this block, put this down, and then break this block. And there. There's more than one way to get the dragon egg, but that's a simple way. Okay, now, come over here. This. And I put the end portal down like so. And I get the... Oh. Not what I was trying to do. Yeah, speak while I'm here. Might as well show this. I built this little platform, but I think like whenever I warp into the end or something, it pushed me down or something. I don't know. I guess it deletes the blocks around me. Whatever. That's uh, not my problem. Anyway. So let me just run back to my portal here. That's partially why I built that tunnel. Makes it simpler. Okay. again. See, I wonder if I could just do this. Now, see, it's t it has to actually be in the portal. 
All right, real quick. Do I have any food on me? Hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Let's grab some food. So I can try and lure it over. That works. There we go. Ah, let's see, is that close enough? Nope, not yet. Dog bowl's in my way, it's a problem. Shouldn't have, I should have put it where the dog is now, but oh well. Yay! Alright, so now you see it glows purple. So let's go over here. Actually, let's go over here. There we go. Bugging me. Okay. So now he's a dire doggy. So now I need to take 30 of these. Like that. 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 Put that there. That there. And that up there. See, there's some things I just don't want to carry around with me. I think he understands. Anyway, okay, so now to get the dire treats, or the dire doggy treats, or whatever, you need. Let's see, it's one of these recipes. There it is. Lots and lots of master treats, eyes of enders, which means lots of ender pearls and blaze powder. And the master treats come from super treats and a diamond, which comes from ordinary creating treats and the golden apple. Now, according to my calculations, grab the recipe here, it takes 30 dire treats to get a dog to go from. Let me grab a stick here. Do I have a stick? Yeah, I have a stick in here, I think. Yeah. Okay. See, he's now level 0, but in purple. This goes up to level 30, and then that's capped completely. So it's a stuck effectively level 90. That means he needs 30 training oh. treats. Well, not training treats. Uh, dire treats. Unlike the other tiers before them, Dire Treats take five of the previous tier to make one. That means it takes five times as many. That means it takes 150 Ordinary Training Treats to make 30 Dire Treats. So, to that end, I'm going to take the 48 Training Treats here, and make another 102. And this is their recipe. So to make 102 of these, I'm going to start with just a stack. So let's grab... Actually, first, let's deal with this lag here. Let's grab... a stack of string. And a bunch of sugar cane. And let's see, my wheat is probably in this chest. I only have 51 wheat. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna need at least three stacks of that. Oh, yeah, I need to fix that. Alright. So, as you can see, this is gonna take me a minute of farming of all things. So I'm going to do that for a minute and then when I come back then we'll resume uh, building these training treats and training up my dog. Okay, so I now have enough wheat to do the whole thing, but I can't use bone meal on reeds so I'm just going to have to wait for them to grow. So I'm going to make do with what I've got and later I will finish the process. But I'll show how it works here. So let me just put this stuff back and that down there. Okay, so first to make the training treats. Actually I need the uh, 
gunpowder. Forever gunpowder. So now I put the wheat on the bottom, like that, the gunpowder there, the string there, the bone there, there, and I'll just distribute the sugar. And see how many I get. Okay, it goes out one short. Oh well. So, 78. Meh, that's alright. It's about half of what I need. Alright, so I'll put the rest of this stuff away here. Like that. And the string and bone go in there. And the. Ooh, I guess I. No, I don't. Oh, I guess I do. Hmm. Don't really want to use that extra sugar cane and. All right. So now I have all these training treats, but I need to take them up to dire treats. So I'll put all but one in there. We'll see why in a second. And then now 65. So now I have 65. Okay. So I'll grab my 12 apples and one golden apple out of my chest. Hmm. I thought I had more blaze powder. I guess I only have the one. Alright. Alright. Let me just take this down to com total simpleness. I was going to say I only had 13 apples, so I could only use 65. But if it's going to be limited by the fact that I only have one blaze powder, then I'm just going to do one to show the concept. So that, and that, and that, and that, and that. That should be everything. So I could probably at least see here. I probably could pull it out of this thing. Yep, one dire treat, but I'm going to do it manually just to show. So you take five training treats, like so. Golden apple, like so. Super treats. Like so. Master treats. Like so. And so. Dire treats. Note that I got five into one. Now I come over here. As you see, level zero. But I do that. And level one. So now I get to add points. So let's go with guard dog and hunter dog, which I only have that. I ran out of points. So I think I'll probably go with hunter dog, guard dog, black pelt, creeper sweeper, and uh, I think. That's all the points I get. Uh, no, I think I also can get Doggy Dash as well. But obviously, I'm going to need a ton more um, reeds in order to do that. And apparently, I'm going to need a ton of blaze powder. Although, hmm, actually, I only need about 30 rods because I get two powder per rod. So. 30 rods should be all I need to get the 60 powder that I need to get 30 eyes of ender which I need to get the three treats although I was actually planning on getting two dire dogs so yeah so it'll be a while but I have a cool plan on how I'm going to get lots and lots of blaze rods which I will work on in a future episode. So just put that back there. Plus, now that I've shown the basic concept of how it works, I can gather the materials off screen and then at some point on screen just 
show the leveling process and the point distribution. Alright, now, I'm sure you've been probably wondering what that stuff is, and that stuff, and that one time when I was over here, what that stuff, well, that's logistics pipes. And what happened was, after I did the exploring, and I got back to my base, I didn't really feel like working on the doggy talent stuff at that moment, so instead, while I was off camera, I fiddled around with logistics pipes and got that all working, and then I went around and wired up all my chests to the system. I guess not really wired, uh, tubed up all my, I don't know, uh, hooked up all my pipes to the system so that I could have it. And I left the walls open in places so that I could show how it works. If I jump up here, which I'm lagging quite a bit here for some reason. Anyway, so I can come over here and show that it hooks up to these pipes. All these teleport pipes are all hooked to different frequencies because I figured out that I can't have pipes all on the same frequency. They don't just work. And so I've hooked them to separate frequencies. So this is remote access. It's not connected to anything, but this lets me have access to my whole network. If I, without, all I have to do is just throw this down hook a pipe up to it, and then I can grab access, grab any of my things for out of these chests anywhere I am. This is connected to the storage tower, which I'll show in a minute. This is connected to another area of storage, and then this is connected to the sorting area access, and what those places are, if I drop down over here, is the sorting area access is over there where the sorting machines are. That is connected as before. It hasn't changed. It's connected to the storage tower, but it's on a different frequency. This, I realized the simplest way to pull the ingots out of this chest would be to simply have the retriever that's down there just simply pull them out of the chest, but at a lower priority than the chest next to it. And then this area, if I come over here and pull up this teleport pipe, is considered other storage. So these chests, all of these chests are connected via that teleport, no, it's probably this, it's actually, I think it's that teleport pipe, no, it's one of them, whatever, to that network. And this network is attached by teleport pipe to the storage area network. This is the main hub of the network. And so now if I take out my remote orderer and click on a pipe, you can see I've got three pages worth of stuff. 3,000 obsidian, 657 iron, stack of ender pearls, my health potions, stuff. It's cool. Also, I had to tweak this. You'll notice that these are low voltage transformers. Um, the bat boxes, the way I had it set up, was not enough. It was still not working. So what I did is I ran the medium voltage from the MFE out through here, split it, and then spent painted each tendril. Well, I left the painting was the same because I hadn't change that any, but I put the LV transformers in right there so that they will convert the voltage down to low voltage and then each bat box is getting its own s unique power signal and that seems to have fixed the problem. So if you ever try to build something similar to that, that's how I recommend doing it. Splitting the current before you split send the individual wires to the machines. I think the reason that fixed the problem is because if you take 32 output, which is the output of the bat box, and try to split that to five machines, it just doesn't work. But if you take the 120 something, which it's 120 something, I can't remember what it was, it was 128 I think? Yeah, 128. 
take the 128 and split that five ways and then feed it into the machine, then it works. Okay, so that's that. Oh, and this. So I'm going to have three quarries. And it looks like actually my quarries are finished. Cool. My quarry finished. The quarry that I had active earlier was goes into this guy. Quarry drop off one. And then this is a quarry drop off two and quarry drop off three. All three quarries will drop their items in, through their teleport pipes into this iron pipe that will then send all of them out this pipe which will connect it to the sorting area. The reason I did that is two reasons. One, yeah this teleport pipe here. One, I wanted to be able to watch as the blocks went through because I realized I had no visual indicator that my quarry was actually working and now I do. And the second reason being quite simply because I needed to have a way to combine the eventual three outputs into one single output so I could feed the hmm, looks like it got turned off to feed the items all into the single chest that would then have them pulled out and sorted because I can't have more than one teleport pipe linking to that teleport pipe, so this seemed like the easiest way to deal with the problem. So, okay, so it's still pumping it out. Huh. Power pipe one. Hmm. Incidentally, you might be wondering what's with that water? Well, what happened is it uncovered lava about there, so I dumped some water on a single source block right there, went down, covered up the lava, etc. But then, as the quarry pulled out each layer, it slowly got across the room, but it was only being able to pull off, fall off the one side, and so it ended up being like that. And that's completely legitimate. So that's the legitimate way to build weird water structures like that. One block at a time. So let's see. Power pipe one, true. Yeah. Hmm. It looks like it just shut off. It's it's pretty clearly done. Alright, so I'm just going to bust this up. Since I don't have Oops, did not me do that. Since I don't have a bucket on me, I'll just break the source block and watch it go away. Okay, it was the water was not actually there anyway. Hmm. All right, so I still don't know what's with the quarry, and the lighting's kind of wonky. But oh well. Anyway, so now that that's done. I'll leave the quarry there for now. I'll deal with that later. So I'll run back here. And the next thing in terms of logistics pipes that I'm going to do is set up a automatic crafting system for various key items that I'd like to be able to automatically craft. Plus, automatic crafting is just cool. Oh, and by the way, I s rigged up the inverter I mentioned that I was going to to simply have the wire go over the block and torch on the block. Wire runs up like that, and that flips the signal. Anyway, oh, and this just does nothing. I just put it there. 
So there'd be something there because there used to be machines here and now they're not. Right. So I'm going to put the automatic crafting up here because that just seems like a logical place to put it. That way I can watch it as items go flying up here to be crafted. But to do that, I'm going to need wood. And I don't have any wood on me. So, I'm going to come over here, click the pipe, and say I want... Oops, wrong button. Let's make it 20 wood blocks. And if there's a chest next to it, they'd go into the chest. But hmm. And actually, I just realized I'm going to need crafting pipes as well. So let me come back down here and grab some crafting logistics pipes. Let's see. Crafting logistics pipes. Let's make eight. Why not? Eight should be enough to get started. Anyway, so... Come on. Hmm. My jetpack has fuel, so I don't know why it's having trouble. Oh well. Alright. So... Layout. I think I'm gonna have pipes on the inner... Alright, so this is gonna be a walkway here. I'm gonna have pipes on this block and crafting tables on this block. So... Do this. Let's put. Well, let's first. Let's build some crafters. To build a crafter, you take planks like so, and then you turn them, some of them into sticks. You need a fair amount of sticks. You also need. five crafting tables, which I only have enough for four, which means I'm going to have to grab some more wood. It's so cool. It's the reason I got the logistics add-on, is because it's that cool. Alright, so one more workbench, and then Go ahead and make 11 wooden gears. And then you put the gears like that. Uh, that's not going to be enough. And you make automatic crafting tables. So I need 12 minus 3. So 12 minus 3 is 9. They each take 4 sticks. So I need 36 sticks. Which, happily enough, is an even number. Like that. Like that. Like that, like that, and like that, and there we go. Five automatic crafting tables. Now then, with my five automatic crafting tables... Hmm, I'm actually going to need even more wood. But this should be... That last bit of wood that I need. Okay. So let's just grab those. Alright. So let's start by putting them... Well... One, two, three, four... Yeah, let's just put them... Hmm, well... <laughs> okay. Um, I'm actually going to need some basic logistics pipes, really, now that I think about it. Well, basically just one. <laughs> Alright, let me just grab one more here. I assume I can build one more. Guess I can't. Yeah, Alright, fine. I'll just put down a uh, crafting pipe and I'll fix it later. I don't feel like digging out the materials for another one. Alright, so... I want to 
put the crafting benches on the wall. So that means one here. Um, yeah. Sure, let's do it like that for right now. And then put the crafting pipes like this. Basically, I'm going to have the whole wall will be crafting pipes. And I'll just keep expanding it as I need more. Hmm, and actually, I should bust this up. Bust this up. Yeah, of course, it would go down there. That's there. That's there. Grab that. Put this here. Now, the way you w make this work is you click on the bench and you tell it what you wanted to craft. So we click on this bench and say I wanted you to craft wood into wood planks. And you click on this bench and say I want to turn wood planks into sticks. And you click on this bench and say I want to turn wood sticks into wooden gears. Click on this bench and say turn wood planks into a crafting table and you click on this bench and you give it the final instruction no, that's not right, hold on um, let me think, I need like 16 I think, yeah which means that I need another bit of there, I guess uh, actually I need to do the gear step first that, make four gears, like that, that, and then there you go. Oh, I can't believe it. I just made it. And my dog's hungry. Okay, let me figure out what's wrong with my dog. I mean, I know it's fine. I didn't put him back in wandering mode. Alright, let me fix the fact he's not in wandering mode. Hmm, actually, I need to ride him back into the... Actually, I know. Let me feed him. I don't know how he got past my fences. I mean, they're fences. I don't know why he's not hungry. I'm trying to feed you here. And I'm lagging pretty badly. There you go, you finally ate. <sighs> Alright, you know what? I don't care. Okay. So where was I? Right. So let's try this again. Hopefully I won't forget to not do that final step. Now, actually, yeah, okay. Oops, there we go. All right. Now you click on the workbench, and you see the pattern, and there you go. Okay, now, the other step is you need to click on the crafting pipes with a wrench specifically the buildcraft wrench, which should be in here somewhere. Uh, let's see. Hmm. There are my torches. There's that stuff. It should be on this screen or something, because it's in the same chest as my redstone, red alloy wire and redstone torches. But I don't see it. Hmm. Wait a minute. Blaze rods! I knew I had blaze rods somewhere. Huh. So I could have made more dire trees. Oh well. Alright, so since my wrench doesn't seem to be showing up, just 
despite the fact I know I've got it connected to it. Yeah, sorting area access. Huh. Whatever. Easy enough to fix. Don't know why I'm lagging so hard, though. Anyway. Grab my wrench. Yeah, see, here's my red alloy wire. Anyway. At some point, I'm going to have to catch my dog, but it's too hard to do when I'm lagging, so I'll just do it later. Unless you're going to be that convenient, in which case I'll just do that. Alright. Alright. Just help if I can jump in a straight line. There we go. Alright, so you click on the crafting things with a workbench, uh, workbench, wrench, and then you click import, and it imports the recipe off of the crafting bench. So you just have to do this for all the benches you create, and there you go. Input, what? Oh, put the wrong table in. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now what I can do is I can come down here and click on this and I can say, see right now it's on full. And you see I've got it, it says it's zero. If I click craft, it tells me all the different things I can craft and I guess how many of them I have available. So I can say automatic crafting table 10. And it does the request. And the stuff goes up there. You see it's doing the wood, the planks, the stick. And it's making the gears. And there come the benches. And there you go. Five automatic crafting tables. I requested 10. Hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's the All right, let me come over here to a different chest and say let me request 10. Yeah, see, it build me some wood as well. So now, so we've got three automatic um, right off the bat. Looks like the rest got stuck there. And that's only four. Okay, so it's got some kinks, but you get the idea. There's... Hmm... I need to... do... I can't remember now, but I think there's like a way to set the default route so excess materials get put into like, um, oh, what's it, the, the, the chest that you requested the order from. Still only got eight. Whatever. I will work out the details and try and figure out what it's doing wrong. Off camera, so this is probably a good end for the episode. I will see you in the next part. Bye!